This is John Morrison. He's uh, the man in charge. What do you think about this? <laughs> what do I think about it? Yeah. I think it's just like when the military says they have a battle plan. Yeah. The first 30 <laughs> seconds into the plan, it's shot. So, Chuck. Yes. Set your cart full of stuff. Yeah, well, I've got two cart loads. Two cart loads. Two cart loads. How often do you bring a cart full of audio gear into a hotel? Not very often. Are you glad to do it? I'm honored to do it. We've got people in here from all over the country. Ray Kimber just arrived. The OPPO, people from uh, California just arrived. Uh, we've got a gentleman all the way from Singapore just arrived. We're Fabulous, stopped. huh? You're going to work up a sweat then? Yes, right. All right. That's right. <laughs> we're we're kind of dedicated down here to... Uh, bringing what the folks want to see to them, you know? Yeah. And we know that the Southeast area has been underserved in past years. Yeah. And we figure headphones are easy to car easier to carry around yeah. than some of those $250,000 speaker systems. Yeah. So this is a good place to start. And, and this is not just vendors. This is a, we're, we're yeah. trying to get everybody in here. Yep. Yeah. Why did you come here today? Atlanta is an interesting market. Um, we participate in the other Can Jam events, like things like SoCal, um, the events that are coming up this summer in San Francisco, and we decided that Atlanta is sort of an untapped market. Um, there's a lot of college students in Atlanta. Um, there's a lot of people clearly interested in you know luxury personal audio. And it just seems like a. I mean, Atlanta is a city of four and a half million people, and it's sort of weird that it's sort of not been, I guess, attacked the way that Southern California has been attacked, the way that Denver with RMAF and Chicago with Exponent, right. and it just seemed like it was, it was the right time to come to the South, yeah. you know, and kind of bring our amps down with us. Yeah. As we see at the Can Jam events, um, we actually have female music lovers, and I think that's sort of what's been missing on the two-channel side with all the various shows. Um, if, I mean, if you were at Can Jam SoCal, at least 10% of the people who showed up were women. Yeah. And that's huh. something we don't see in the high end. So, yeah. You know, it's nice to actually see you know, millennials. I mean, God, God forbid, we'd, have, we'd have yeah. go after 25 to 35 year olds who listen to music. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're excited to be here. Um, it's a great city. I mean, the, the crowd already this early in the morning is really kind of getting big, so it's nice to be here. Well, thanks, Ian. Let's, Thank let's see the crowd. Yeah, because this is early in the morning here still. It's, what, 9.30 or something like that? And uh, it's starting to fill up. Yeah, we're right here in Buford, Georgia, about 45 minutes north of Atlanta. And so this is pretty convenient for you to have a, yes, a show right here. Right in our backyard. Is this your first show? First show. Really? First show in Atlanta. First show in Atlanta. Yeah. But at what other shows have you been to? Uh, Expona, Can Jam, and we do a lot of musician shows as well, so NAMM. Uh-huh. And we do plan on attending CES as well. And so what attracted you to this particular show? Well, I guess it's right in our backyard. We got to come out. <laughs> yeah, you got to come out for that. <laughs> Well, Doug is a very, very unusual uh, manufacturer. I almost hesitate to use the word manufacturer with Doug because he really does short production runs of things. Are you going to Are you going to be in production with these amplifiers for a longer period of time, or uh, these? Uh, so these are they're, because the price is going up a little bit because the components are getting more and more expensive. So these are becoming less that I will make because I, I used to do like a dozen at a time. Right. So those these are becoming one-offs um, and so I'll do one or two as a special order item right so some of the other ones I make a this is a smaller amplifier this is a DSHA 2 and so this one is more likely to be done as a small production run oops and and um, but are you going to continue to do the uh, uh, the thing where you just uh, make an amplifier of a type and then get bored with it and go on to something different. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I, Good. Because there are there are so many circuits to explore, so yeah. many different topologies to explore. Yeah. That I don't like doing the same thing over and over. Right. So I want I want to learn something new with each right. generation. Right. Right. So each one changes. Boy, I tell you. If I was in the in the in the business of buying the amplifiers over time, I, I would definitely buy some of Doug's amps because they're so unusual. Each one, they're always really really good, and and 
I think they'll probably appreciate in value because they'll, they're going to become rarities over yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the theory. Yeah. Sure. All right, Doug, man. Thanks, man. All right, it's good thanks. to see you. This is Ray Kimber from Kimber Cable. Hi, Ray. Hello. Now, here's the question for you today. Okay. This is an unusual event for you to spend some time at. I mean, this is not the big event or anything like that. You've, you've come out from Utah for this thing. Why, why'd you come to this little event? Well, uh, there, there's a practical reason and an, and an enthusiast reason. Uh, with our new headphone cables, uh, you know, you get a little fire back in your soul and, and you've got some young guys that kind of developed it and they're saying, come on, come on, and so you go. Yeah. And uh, the other reason is that I, I was uh, going to be in, uh, in uh, Europe uh, seeing some of the distributors, but they put me on jury duty for April, May, oh. and June, and so I have to be very careful when I slip out of town so I don't end up in jail when I return. Oh, oh no. <laughs> So, so an enthusiast reason and a perfectly practical reason. Right. And hey, look at this old school headroom amp. Nice stuff. A Sennheiser amp. KG SSHV carbon. Stax 9009. Who could this be? Oh, it's Perk. Hey, how you doing, Perk? Good yeah, to see you, man. Know. Haven't seen you for ages and ages and ages. What's that? Uh, what do you think about this event? You were part of uh, putting this together to some extent, huh? Well, actually, I, I actually never envisioned it's going to get this, to be this big. Actually, I'm, I'm quite happy. I, you know, I don't get to go to like the, the bigger event, so you know, be able to see you know Cat Lander actually taking shape like this is pretty amazing. Yeah. The Southeast needs something like this. New York's got a pretty active group, and LA's got active groups, San Francisco's got active groups, but there's really not much going on in the South, and this is nice to have here. Yeah, I think so. I mean, all the credit go to uh, you know Atlanta Video and Audio Club, though. They actually did a lot of legwork on that and putting all this stuff together. Yeah. As someone who actually have a full-time job, I, I can only help a little bit. Yeah. And this baby. This baby. I'm familiar with this baby. You know, I didn't pay much for it. I, I, I think I paid like 1100 for it. But it's such a great, great, great headphone app. I mean, I I hope, you know, Headroom bring, bring it back or, you know, do something about it. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I go through a lot of, you know, app, you know, solid state, and this still compete right at the top. You think so? Yeah, I do. I mean, just my... Well, thank you. That, that's good to hear. I, I always felt they were pretty confident amplifiers, so it's good stuff. And what about this uh, beast right here? This is beautiful. You know, I'm not really um, great in terms of able to describe circuit, but um, it's a KTSS HV carbon version. Um, it's a DIY, do it yourself amp. Uh, you know, Steve Grot, a friend of um, Andy. Yeah. And uh, they're on head case and head fine. Yeah. Um, able to help me build it. And yeah. um, it's, you know, the, 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 the circuit was, you know, designed by uh, Kevin Kilmore. Yeah. Um, you have to hear it. Yeah. Maybe you, you change your mind about the O and I being bright. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a, a perfect example of. Um, the kinds of things that happen in this hobby that are are not related to industry is that uh, is that guys can can come together and and network uh, online and and uh, a person can get their hands on uh, a beautiful electrostatic amplifier like this um, through friends and and, yep. and through the craftsmanship and skills of others. It's it's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, the case work is done in Italy, I believe, but. Um and uh, so you, I think he ordered the casework, all of this, you know, laser engraving done over there, and then you know, ship it here. I was part of the group buy on the uh, on the DIY, you know, board for both the you know the audio and the. It was on the headcase, right? Yes, on headcase. Yeah. Which is a great, great place. Yeah. And uh, and Kevin Gilmore, my, yeah. I mean, he he designed some of the best electrostat yeah, or you know am period. Yeah. And then you know he open saw that to the public. So that you know, anyone can want to can can build them. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Now we're gonna take a look at a very interesting rig that Brent brought down. Um, I think maybe he had 
too many biscuits and gravy and it went to his head with the tryptophan and he decided to do this. Brent, why don't you give us a show of what you got, man? Well, I was looking through my uh, stash of stuff and I was like, all right, what does this meat need that they're not gonna have? And that, my friends, is a Moran's tape deck. Ooh, not, not only a tape deck, but a dual tape deck. This baby is a mixtape making monster. Oh yes, and at the lovely price, of ten dollars and forty nine cents at Goodwill. Uh, <laughs> it's just a little secret. Uh, yeah. But yeah, four hundred dollar list machine, and now you can get it for the cost of a downloaded album. Yeah. While you're there, pick Look up. Look at this beautiful KTEL <laughs> cassette selector. Yeah. Oh yeah. Pick up a few uh, of your favorite albums. Well, from the Michael Eddie's Jackson night. Thriller on cassette. That's got to be a classic. Oh yeah. You have you have Edgar Winter. They only come out at night in there. Uh, sadly, I do not. No, that's a good but, one. That's really an eight track, actually. Yeah. A classic. So. I, s I started out getting. Um, I was sitting in line in record store day. Someone told me about Skrillex on cassette for record store day. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So I went to buy it, but the only tape deck I had was in my 1986 BMW 3 Series project car. So I went to Goodwill. Yeah. So anyways. That's beautiful. I love it. Uh, now, you. now, on a more serious note is the amplifier. Tell us about the amp. The amplifier is fairly serious. Sadly, it's missing a volume knob, but that's, that's my bad. This is started life as a single power uh, extreme from back in the day. A friend of mine uh, goes by Screaming Oranges on various forums. Uh, we were in the chat room and he offered it up to anyone just to, to have to play with. Uh, Ari goes by Nikon God on the forums. Yeah. He wound up winning the little competition out of the chat and Alex sent it to him. Well, Ari had wet sanded the chassis and done this beautiful reddish orange paint job and he also did a few modifications i have the list of it somewhere i cannot begin to even understand it but changed transformers and whatnot and originally there was an otl output on this amp he decided that wasn't quite enough and now on the right hand side we actually have an OTL output. On the left, we have a transformer coupled output. Oh, really? Yeah. That is cool. And it's there's a little bit different sound, and it's very, very interesting. And, uh, and th th these won't burst into flames. <laughs> that is correct. That is that is <laughs> one this, reason this that the main modification to it. <laughs> right. This has been safety checked and <laughs> it's been upgraded. But the uh, the tubes, these IBM branded tubes, are tongue sole. Uh, IBM branded five nine nine eight. Wow. So, uh, from my research, they are actually tongue souls. So, um, it doesn't sound half bad. Cool. Yeah. So this is a, a, a guy that are in a company that I haven't met before, Emu or Emu. They, they're actually owned by Creative, and uh, Chen here brought his stuff over. He's quite a craftsman. Hi, Chen. How are you? <laughs> Thank you for coming all the way to Atlanta and, and, and showing off your gear. Would you give us a little tour of, of the gear that you brought and, and some of the wood? What we have now is two headphones. This is Walnut. And this is a this is essentially a modified uh, creative or Vana Live. All right, we one. we have this in our company that we we want to check have the wood change onto this. We have some debate in the company there how much different after changing this into wood. Right. And we go ahead to do to do it, and we found that there's there's difference. Yeah. And people like the wood. Yeah. So sure. This is why we're offering this to the public. Yeah. Right. And, and, and talk about wood, you've, you've really done some interesting things with, uh, with wood here, uh, making all sorts of uh, 
um, back covers of various types of, of woods. And these are all for the... Uh, for the tick, the emu tick. It, these are essentially the, the foster, which these are essentially the, the foster TH series headphones also that, was, that came from the Denon uh, they, originally. They come from foster, the same factory. Right, and so originally they were in the Denon uh, for uh, yes. line and, they, and then they've, they've modeled, changed over time and now you're doing some stuff with them. All right, we, we actually tune together with them we use their structure, we use our own solution for wood. Right. We've gone through more than 10 different types of woods right. during the experiments. We actually compare within the company, we have opinion from different people. And we found that we settled out with teak, which is this one. Teak? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then ebony, this is ebony. the one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then this is this is rose, but this is a raw one, we have not done any coating. Right. What you, you, should, you can see is, it, the rose it can come into this and this. Yeah. These are, the, 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 there's just such beautiful uh, feeling of these woods. He was pointing out um, this wood. Tell us about the finish on this wood oh, again yes, you mentioned. This, this, if you look at this and this, this is ash wood. These mm -hmm. are raw, these are with the coating. And if you look at this and this, the tick using the same coating. You look at this block here, this is also thick. Yeah. See the, the coating that we have, unlike the the rest, for example, this is a five hours job, we send it to ovens. Right. This fast, easy. This is a coating that takes seven days. Seven days. Yes, because we apply seven coating on it. Huh. Each coating will take one day to settle uh -huh. in room temperature. So it is a very lengthy job. It's not difficult, but then it's labor intensive. Yeah. So we, we think that this this texture is like wood itself. We keep yeah. the pattern so I, much. Yeah, I have to say that the the feel of this is very satiny, satiny smooth. It's it it doesn't have any sort of sticky feeling or, or you know resistance to it's it. Just it's like very beautiful. It belongs to the wood itself. The yeah. thing on the wood, this, this surface is also a, a liquid from the tree itself. Uh. So th they are the same thing. Uh -huh. So if you look at all this pattern we have, these are, these are ash wood, they, these are actually mahogany. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is purple heart. Yeah. <laughs> Sound familiar. Yeah. Well, well, Chen, thank you very much for, for coming to Atlanta. I really appreciate it. Yes. Uh, we're, we're going to have uh, uh, more, more chatting and talking thank over you. time. I'm definitely going to get my hands on uh, some of these uh, uh, pieces of wood, uh, uh, some of these headphones here. The presentation cases are, are, just, are just lovely. Um, uh, Take a look on this. This yeah. coating is, yeah, I explained to you this coating. Yeah. See, this is a wood that, um, it's, it's, the surface is so smooth. Yeah. And then uh, we we have no coating on it. Yeah. And this tree is not young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, really a, a table full of, of wonderful textures. It's, it's going to be fun to, <laughs> to, to learn a little bit more about this. Thank you very much, Chan. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, so in the category of stuff that, oh my gosh, I didn't expect to see this here. We've got Lee Tingler, and, and Lee has, well, geez, something that I, I just want so bad. And, and I'm going to get some of these things, and, and we're going to do a review of them because I think a lot of you folks who like the smell of solder are going to enjoy this. Hi, Lee. How you doing? Hey, man. How you doing? Huh? Good. What, uh, so show us your solder buddies. Well, this is a solder buddy ACS, and what it does, it holds many different types of connectors. Here we have the 3.5 off of this beautiful uh, emu uh, set yeah, that's the, yeah. headphones. Yeah. So anyway, you want to you need you you broke your cable and you need to resolder it. You can put your new connector here. Put your wiring onto this. This is the post and clip system, and what this does gives you perfect alignment, and it's a strain release, so if you're working on a, your table or your uh, uh, stage or something, and somebody trips over the wire, yeah. it doesn't pull your work apart. And the beauty of this thing, uh, you can do XLRs, you can do the hybrids, you can do your quarter inch phone plugs, 3.5s, minis, uh, your wall wart power connectors, 
Uh, over here we have another. Even, even has uh, holes on the side oh, yeah, if yeah. you like. If you like soldering your your connectors. All right, sideways. let's just give you a show you that. What you can do is just plug that in here. Right, so, and then you can work on it flat on the almost right. flat on the table without it moving. Right, there are some people who like to work uh, flat without. Sure. Right. Sure. So uh, that. And then is, there's another one. Now this is called SPK. The SPK model is aimed at more of the professional, but uh, you know those uh, big systems in uh, churches and concerts, they generally have a connector on the back that twists in. Right, the locking connector. Uh -huh. Right, they're called the Neutrik Speakon. So this is designed for that, and it's designed to have the taller connector. Uh, um, right, for the up arc here like that, so the right. arc is still the same. And this one is adjustable, so right, you can it adjust has, the... Right, the, it has a vice in it. Uh, right. Everybody should have their own vice. <laughs> and why not a Versa vice? Yeah. Uh, so this opens up to accept any of the large format connectors. It also has your quarter inch, your banana 3.5 in it. Nice. And over here is something really fun that I made. I have a friend that's a motorcyclist, and a tie I'm a motorcyclist, Okay, yeah. I understand you are. Oh, saved by the bell. Okay, if we can corral Tile oh. and get him out to table well, 48. We're going to see more of this. We're going to see more of this. Thank you, Lee. We're gonna, I'm going to show him the more, more of it, but i got to go do this here. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Right. right. <laughs> Mike! You're going to put me on the spot? Yeah, one minute on Can Lanta. <laughs> <laughs> One minute. Oh my god, I'm Ken Lanta. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so proud of Joe Saxon, you know, with what he's done with Headphone Audiophile. It's the vibe of a meet. Our gold stack, the QP1s, we got the 600 eyes out, the Mies. Right, because you're with um, Quest Tile now. Yeah, and I'm with Quest Tile, and I'm so proud to be with Bruce Ball, music and audio. This is the kind of events that I love. We have a small company called Headsonics. We are now the U.S. distributor of uh, Meza, Mies, Meze. The bees knees, try bees. No, I just think it rolls <laughs> off the tongue a lot better. I think Odyssey needed the apostrophe. This man, the Grand Puba. I want to go back to what you just said a moment ago that this is uh, like the old school uh, meat. This is the meat vibe. We started to have meats where event we'd have vendors there. People started to say, oh, it's not really the same when you have vendors there. But to us, it was just a matter of the vibe. It's more communal. It's much more laid back. There's just not as much pressure to do the dog and pony. I, I can say to someone who's 60 years old here, you mind if I play you some ear candy? Just trust me. Played him some Recondite, minimal tech house track. And he was in heaven. I can't can't do that at CES, and it's just a it's just a, a vibe where it's about the community, it's about music through headphones, not necessarily about the names of brands. That's part of it. The meat vibe, a get together with good friends that happens to have great great rigs around. Yeah, your minute is up. <laughs> <laughs> Always a pleasure. Thanks, man. I'm already, you're already on camera. Hi, Matt. Hi, Tile. <laughs> so. You've been an instigator around here. <laughs> That's one way to put it, yes. Um, uh, uh, how have you enjoyed the meet so far, and, and what do you think is uh, lovely about it? Um, there was lots of gear here personally that I wanted to share with some people. And uh, you know, a lot of times on the forums you talk to guys, you PM back and forth, you tell them what you like, share information. So part of the meet, Part of the interest of the meet today was for me to share some things, some discoveries I had made, and uh, you, know, you wait a long time to get together sometimes. With other enthusiasts. Exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, where, where's your stuff? Where was your stuff? Oh, right there. So, and what are you sharing with us today? What do you got? You got uh, the Quest Style here? Yes, this is the Quest Style dual mono stack. Right. So it's running uh, fully balanced uh, mono to each channel on the headphone. And I see some shit stuff back there. And I'm using uh, the multi-bit Gungner. And the uh, Mjolnir 2 is being used as a preamp to the Quest Style stack. With the uh, Ether. And oh, is this your bottlehead? This is my bottlehead. Oh, crack. sweet! I built a bottlehead. Uh, yeah, I watched the video. Did you watch the video? <laughs> Did you build your bottlehead before I built mine? 
Uh, this was a week old. This is a week old? Yeah. So you watch, was it helpful at all? Of course. <laughs> Just a little. I, I use all your videos, Tom. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's really nice. That, that's a, oh, it's got feet on it and any, everything. That's sweet. And you painted the uh, cover of the Transformer? Sure. This is this is called the Stormtrooper look, the black and the white. The Stormtrooper <laughs> That's so cool. I mean, I was interested in talking with you, Matt, but now that I've seen your gear, I'd much oh, rather it's ogle. It's much more interesting than I am. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, uh, thanks for sharing your gear with all of us uh, here today. And, My pleasure. And thanks for being an instigator around here. Glad to do it. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Yep. We'll see you next time. Okay. All right. Well, I'll get out of your way so you can hook up your gear. I hear you got a turntable with you today. Oh, I got a turntable, single ended, uh, 300B tube amp. Got solid state as well as tube. About four different headphones. Boy, you're jumping in with it both feet. Listen. You like you're like one of the he headphone hobbyists out here, right? I'm I'm a hard shell <laughs> headphone. Hobbies. All right. It's an honor to be so. Well, and thanks so much for for hosting this whole nine yards. <laughs> thanks for being here yourself. Have fun, Chuck. Well, we'll we'll uh, catch you later. All right. Yeah, we'll spend. Some you got you, you got stuff to do right here. I got stuff to do, baby. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's comfortable. I'm trying to move him into an uncomfortable area where we get new people in because. There's nothing like being a little uncomfortable to keep you on your toes, don't exactly. you think? That's right. Exactly. All right. All right. Thanks, John. We'll we'll see you throughout the day. Oh, I'm sure. I will be <laughs> I will be here running in circles. All right.